Hello and welcome back to Boring Dad Gaming, where today we're going to be playing some more Vampire Therapist. I think we're heading into our second client, aren't we? Uh, these are the autosaves, which is the most recent one. Uh, this one, isn't it? And this brings us into the right place. It's nice it's got alternate autosaves, actually. Um, you know, so if something does go wrong, is, you haven't just got the one. Incredible protege. Oh, come on now, I have no idea what I'm doing. Evidence stands against that reasoning, my friend. Do we need to talk about disqualifying hmm. the positive again? <laughs> all right, all right, I get it. I guess I've been muddling through okay. You've been doing wonderfully. I hope you are ready for a bit of a challenge tonight. Your next client has been known to be somewhat difficult. Here, look at her intake form. Isabella Deste. Dang, <laughs> she's got some funny tasting hats. Okay, client record. Isabella Deste, like we, he just said, age 550, female from the Renaissance. Uh, Isabella Deste was a key figure in the Italian Renaissance, funding the works of Leonardo da Vinci, Andrea Mantegna, and Michelangelo. She received a humanist education and knows much about history, art, music, and philosophy. She comes from a highly aristocratic background, but has endured considerable family issues through the generations. She states that she is undergoing an existential immortality crisis, suggesting that her life and unlife have both been meaningless. Suggestion, be exceedingly polite. <laughs> I think you should get along quite well then. <laughs> I'll walk right into that one. Isabella is not your average vampire. She was once the powerful matriarch of one of the most influential families in Europe. She fraternized with popes and kings, and she also wielded great power over the art world. Some say that she was the model for the Mona Lisa. One of them highfalutin types, huh? I don't mm -hmm. think she's gonna like me much. She is as human as any of us, Samuel. I already know you will find a way to relate with her. If you say so. Remember, you can always seek my advice if you feel lost. You are not alone, but I hear the beating of elegant wings. Breathe, Samuel. Oh, and do be polite. Goodness. So you are the new therapist Andromachos told me of. I was not expecting someone so rugged. Sam Wall's at your service, ma'am. You are a therapist. Oh, well, that's what I'm here for, ma'am. Enough with this, ma'am. I am not running a whorehouse. <laughs> you may call me Signora. Oh God. Okay, Signora. Sin. Signor. That's uh, Signora. 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 That's probably the closest. All right, Signora. You have seen my what? Have you been <laughs> peeking under my skirts, young man? <laughs> huh? <laughs> what are you talking about, lady? Signora. Say it. Signora. Signora! Signora! Signora? Poor Camisseria, this is not going to be easy, is it? Imagine Porker is pig. S sad pig? Tragic pig? <laughs> therapy ain't never easy, Signora. So, therapy is always easy then? I said it ain't never easy, Signora. Mm. Is therapy easy or is it not? Uh, <laughs> not, I guess. Oh, how are we to examine my inner demons if your own speech is so diabolical? You know what? Uh, let's start over. Greetings and salutations, Signora. I am most honored to receive you in my humble office. Very well. I suppose it will do. I'm just here to help, Signora. It says here on your intake forms that you've been having a tough time lately. A tough time? Indeed, yes, it has been a tough time. Time. The realization that not only am I a corpse, but that I have been a useless corpse for nearly 400 years is a tough time. So what set off this feeling that you're a corpse? I saw a film at the cinema. <laughs> hey, I love the cinema. Um... Hollywood glamour, maybe? I can't get enough Hollywood. All that glitz and glamour. Them celebrities sure know how to look good. Per favore. They look like employees of a peacock brothel. The battle between licentiousness and chastity has ended, and chastity has been utterly degraded on the battlefield. They should be ashamed of themselves, parading their young flesh for the adulation of fools. I could teach them about proper fashion. 
But alas, they would be incapable of hearing my wisdom. Uh, I can tell I'm barking up the wrong tree here. Uh, let's go back to this movie you saw at the cinema. It was a most terrible film, one that shook me to my core. The pain of it lingers with me still five years later. Well, movies can be pretty powerful. Heck, I remember seeing one of the first films. There was a train coming right for the audience. <laughs> we thought we were dead for sure. This film was not powerful. It was meaningless. It said nothing, did nothing, less than nothing, as loudly and garishly as possible. And the audience, fools that they were, cheered, cheered, applauded this desecration of the mind. I hate this film with all my being, for it has done the cruelest thing. It has revealed the dark truth. This life that I cling to has no purpose. Dang, what the heck was this movie? Space Wars. <laughs> Rise of the Space Walker. <laughs> well, wait a minute. Space Wars, the big science fiction franchise? Yes, I believe it is important to understand modern media diets. But that's the movie that gave you your personal crisis? Mind your tone. Do not think me a fool. I know it was not high art. But the money it made, it would make even the Pope blush. This stinking trash. This is what the people want. You see, I understand now. My attempts to infuse art with meaning were pointless. All that I am, all that I ever was, is dead. Could be the control fallacy, like uh, attempting to, you know, control art. Oh. For such a complicated woman, the answers are overly simple for Signora Deste, are they not, Samuel? You see, I understand now. My attempts to infuse art with meaning were pointless. All that I am, all that I ever was, is dead. Could be the black and white Nosferatu thinking. Uh, I think it probably is that. You don't seem that dead to me. We're having this conversation, ain't we? Ain't just lying there decomposing. It is no different. I might as well be rotting in the ground. <laughs> I think you might get pretty bored. Are you getting smart with me, boy? Look, I'm just talking facts. If you're saying all you are is dead, I think you might be doing some Nosferatu thinking. It ain't black and white, you're here. But let's go back to what you were saying. Once, I elevated art, and all the world benefited. Why have I lost my power to elevate art now? Uh, this has got to be a control fallacy, right? All the world benefited? There's a lot of people, and they got a lot of different preferences. You can't get them all, can you? But I could, once upon a time. You can't reach everybody, Senora. I hadn't even heard of the Mona Lisa until about 1911. Did you have any schooling whatsoever? No, I didn't. But I don't think anyone in my time knew about the Mona Lisa either. Oh, how wonderful. You <laughs> add to my despair. I'm saying you can't reach everyone, even in your own time. Hmm. That is true. I doubt the rabble had much of an opinion about the so-called great masters. <laughs> we only know what we know. But you were saying... It was all for nothing. What good was guiding Da Vinci when they sell the Mona Lisa on beer coasters? Um, I'm thinking Nosferatu again, right? So let me get this straight. For you, the Mona Lisa is good if it's only ever a painting. Of course. Those of us who are educated know the way things should be and when they fall short. So there's perfect and not perfect for you, huh? Yes. How clever of you to understand the difference. <laughs> You're not giving yourself a lot of room in between, are you? No, there is no in between. There ain't much that's perfect in this world, Senora. <laughs> you must be disappointed a lot of the time. You have no idea. But as I was saying, it should not be so. Art should have meaning. Purpose. Beauty should expose truth. I mean, these seem like should statements, don't they? You're saying art should have meaning and purpose, but does all art need those things? 
what is the purpose of creation otherwise? How about if I just like doodling? Ain't that a good enough reason to draw? It is a pointless reason. Well, maybe I want to do something pointless. All I'm saying is that I don't have the same shoulds you do. Perhaps you should. <laughs> but I don't. I'm gonna do what I'm gonna do. Which is a speak like a peasant. Heck, that's what I am, Senora. Ain't nothing gonna change that reality. Uh, let's get back to what you were saying. But it seems I am just a dead woman. A walking corpse who is not worth listening to. I should walk into the sun. Now that's supposed to trick you into it being a should statement, I think, but I'm, I'm gonna call that labeling. Now why have you gotta go and call yourself names? They are not names, they are my reality. I am a dead woman, and I am a corpse, am I not? Is that all you are? This is how I am defined by the world. Seems to me you're the one using them names. Hell, I think I'd be a little afraid of calling you a corpse. As you should be. Allow me to continue. You know, you make me sound rather mad. Like an old woman railing at the world, screaming into the void, all to no purpose. Look, Senora, all I'm trying to do is show you where you're uh, a little rigid in your thinking is all. You're expecting a lot from the world and a lot from yourself. It ain't no surprise that you're going to be disappointed over and over again. I suppose that is some insight. Indeed, I have been in a state of disappointment from the moment I was 16. But what happened when you were 16? I got married. Ah, <laughs> uh, uh -huh. <laughs> I think I get it. You absolutely do not get it. You are a man. Well then, help me understand. Frankie, my husband, he <laughs> taught me the meaning of disappointment. He taught me the world was built upon lies. These things men proclaim as values. Truth, beauty, the spiritual. They were all fiction. But if men did not live according to principle, I would. I would set the example and shame them all. Yet, what a fool I have been to think humanity had greater aims. So, what's this greater aim you're talking about? I received a humanist education as a child. I was taught that the pathway to God was through rationality and a questioning mind, not slavish devotion to tradition. This world is not Eden. But it could be. Or so I thought. So you're talking about a literal pathway to God? No, fool. A pathway to godliness. To live according to our natures. Our true natures. <laughs> you mean being vampires? Come now, boy. Nothing could be further from natural. All this foolish hissing and copulation and blood drinking does not bring us closer to God. But it does give us more time to find the path. Will, talk to me about this pathway to God. Uh, how do you reckon we find this path? I reckon nothing. I've always known that we can find our way back to God by fulfilling our human potential to be the greatest souls possible. Seems like control fallacy again, no? You really think we've got that much control, Senora? All we gotta do is be perfect, and then we've got our pathway to the Almighty? Yes, it seems quite clear to me. Senora, if that's how it is, it ain't no wonder you ain't forgiving yourself or anyone for the slightest mistakes. <laughs> I would ask myself if anyone really has that much control, but keep talking. I have always known we must master ourselves and our baser instincts. Your two must triumph. I have nope. always known that the earthly lives we lead are disgusting, and only war and death can come of them. So probably Nosferatu thinking, like all this black and white. Hold up just a sec there, cowpoke. You really think all we can do is sow death and destruction? I do not poke cows. <clears throat> do I look like a farmer? Come on, senora. You've been alive to see what? 15, 20 billion people live and die? You really saying death and destruction is all each and every one of them ever amounted to? Well, perhaps not individually, but as an immortal, I look at the greater arc of history. Well, most of us ain't looking to contribute to the greater arc of history, but that don't mean life's pointless. <laughs> That's some Nosferatu thinking, I'll tell you what. But let's continue. I'll tell you what. I have always known the people have become fat 
and lazy, and living within the Garden of Eden is impossible in such a state. I have always known we should act with dignity if we would take our place at God's side once more. It's just should statements again. I think this here's the meat of it, Signora. The filet mignon. I fear your French is even worse than your <laughs> Italian. Here's the thing, Signora. Who came up with all them shoulds that'll take you to God? Why, the greatest thinkers of history that I studied in my youth. Plato, Aristotle, Cicero, Aquinas. Sounds like a bunch of dead guys to me. They really had it all figured out way back when, huh? Well, of course not. How foolish do you think me? <laughs> not at all, Signora. Just questioning where all them shoulds are coming from. But let's keep going. These things here, you've always known. I gotta challenge them, Signora. Let's talk about what you just said. I reckon nothing. I've always known that we can find our way back to God by fulfilling our human potential to be the greatest souls possible. Probably Nosferatu again? Black so and white? what happens if we don't become the greatest souls possible? Then godliness is denied to us, as it should be. So either we ascend or we're nothing, huh? I am glad to hear you are not as foolish as you look. Oh, well, let's be honest, senor. Plain folks like me ain't got aspirations of being as good as Jesus Christ. Ain't he supposed to be a forgiven sword anyway? Oh, let's just get back to what you were saying. I have always known we must master ourselves and our baser instincts. Virtue must triumph over vice. Control fallacy? Been around a while, Senora. In all that time, when have we mastered ourselves and our baser instincts? Not a single day. Men, especially, have no bottom to their depravity. Uh, all right, fair enough. So us fellas have disappointed you every day for a few hundred years, right? Ain't that proof that nothing you do is gonna change that? An evil thought, Mr. Sam Walls, but true, I concede. We're in agreement then. It's a little bit of a control fallacy if you think that's gonna change because of you. Well, let's keep going. So you think you are so very clever, do you, boy? That by pointing out my distortions, you have won? That is where you are truly the fool. I already know how wrong I have been, that I have been chasing an impossible fiction all my life. Indeed, I now believe that even if we did follow the pathway to God, once we reach the end, we would discover that he, too, was a work of fiction. When I say God, I mean goodness, propriety, intelligence. God himself is a lie. I see. So you've lost your faith? Yes. It has crumbled to dust, much like myself in this fat, wretched old body. Beauty and truth are lies. Ideas developed by ugly men to justify their existence. While we occupy ourselves chasing those ideals, they create <laughs> space wars to <laughs> lose Star our Wars money has and our this for All this self-questioning and self-doubt. And to think... They call me judgmental, or well, they created the false ideal to judge against. You don't think I'm judgmental, do you, boy? <laughs> They're all yes answers. Uh, I wouldn't put it that way, yeah. exactly. Uh, besides, I ain't gonna call you names. In fact, that's where I think I want to challenge you. Senora, <laughs> I think the person you're judging more than anyone is yourself. I know you got raised with all them high ideals, so of course you're getting disappointed when nobody can reach them. That's some heavy pressure. Not just on them, but on yourself. I'd ask yourself what all that pressure's doing for you. Is it bringing you any satisfaction? We can't always control what things are gonna be. This is not acceptable. Okay. Is she disqualifying the positive? Hold on, I know this one. What the heck she mean it's unacceptable to not be in control all the time? Now say that again, Senora. I said it is not acceptable for things to be as they are. Okay, so is that another control fallacy then? Oh. I got some bad news for you, Senora. None of us really has the power to change the world on our own. Not even a clever lady like yourself. 
I suggest we start working on ways of helping you find a way to accept the world for what it is. But the world is base and unworthy. Remember that term I told you about? Nosferatu thinking? You're gonna strip all the color out of the world if you keep doing that. The world's a lot more than just base and unworthy. Nosferatu thinking. I am not used to having my own thoughts thrown back at me. Well, that's why you're here, ain't it? I ain't gonna help you change the world, Senora. All I can do is help you find some other perspectives. I suppose there is a certain simpleton's <laughs> wisdom in the way you speak. Thanks. I guess. Very well, boy. I will consider what you have said. We will meet again in exactly four weeks. Do we have an understanding? Yes, indeed, Senora. Ugh. Please learn to speak properly by then. Well done, Samuel. I believe you handled Senora Deste quite well. You kidding? That lady straight up hates my guts. Samuel, if Isabella Deste hated your guts, she would not be shy about telling you so. That I believe. The older we get, the harder it is to gain a different perspective. Have patience. We are not all as wise as Samuel Walls. Hm. Guess it's just that simpleton's wisdom, as the Signora called it. Do not adopt her labels, Samuel. I will not stand for it. I know she was a challenge, but you rose to it as I knew you would. I think you deserve a night of hard drinking. What do you say? <laughs> you don't need to tell me twice. Hm. All right, Andy. I'll see you later then. Indeed, Samuel. Enjoy yourself. Excellent work tonight. Rest in peace. Not quite as good as the first one, but then I think she was harder to pinpoint the nature of some of the stuff that she was saying. Dang, I think that's enough abuse for one night. I could use a drink in a quiet night. Hey, cowboy. Why the long face? <laughs> I used to say the same thing to my princess. Your daughter? My horse, actually. Yeah. She never really understood the joke, but I still like telling it to her. You didn't answer my question, gunslinger. What's got you down? Oh, I just finished up with my second client. She gave me a tongue lashing to remember her by. You ever talk to someone who's so educated and refined that they make you feel like a space alien? Only everyone I ever met in law school. At least until I learned to speak their language. You're a lawyer? Was, and no, I wasn't the blood-sucking kind before you start with the vampire jokes. Just a wide-eyed DC do-gooder. But I get what you're talking about. People can use language like a membership card. You don't speak the lingo, you don't get in. Well, that's just what I mean. I just ain't sure I've got the lingo for a 500-year-old high-society renaissance woman. Mm -hmm. Well, how do you think your session went? Think she heard you? Yeah, I think so. I, I mean, I, it was, as I said, it wasn't as good as our first session, but I, I think she came away accepting that she had uh, stuff to learn. Well, uh, she did say that I'd given her some stuff to think about. And to tell the truth, she seemed kind of embarrassed about that. So what? If she heard you, I'd take the W, cowboy. Take the W? What, the wagon? The win, Gramps. <laughs> Maybe she isn't going to relate to you, but that doesn't mean she can't hear you. <laughs> you're probably right. I guess I'll take the W. And while you're at it, I'll take some B, too. Uh, that's blood, see? What are you in the mood for? Men? Women? Something a little more off the beaten path? What? I think I'll have some takeaway tonight. What have you got? Here, try this. Should put some color in those cheeks. <laughs> you really ain't squeamish, huh, Crimson? Nah. Healthy blood never hurt anyone. I've been hanging around vampires for 20 years, and they aren't so scary. Not even Bert. What, that old pointy-eared teddy bear? He's a total sweetheart, unless someone gets aggressive or touchy with the customers. What does he do then? They get a stern warning. And if they don't listen? Why, then he eats them. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he is a teddy bear. I met Teddy Roosevelt back in the night, and I'm pretty sure he would have done the same thing. Speaking of which, I got a thirst something fierce. I think I'll head back to my coffin for a little rest. You too, Sam. Don't let the Draculas bite. Time to crack open a warm one. Mmm, that's the good stuff. Now, maybe I can find a quote from one of my favorite books that'll help give me a little inspiration. Or I could watch the Three Stooges hit each other a whole bunch. <laughs> or I could just go to sleep. What's it gonna be, Sammy boy? Uh, let's watch some Three Stooges. I never get tired of these jokesters. Hmm. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, I'll keep watching for a minute. I mean, I... I don't know if it's going to be like the full film or something. It might be. I just want to let it start and get past these credits. What is your name? Gail Tempest. What is your occupation? I'm a dancer. On the night of February the That's alright, we'll start watching TV. Mm. I can't help but feel there's some symbolism to the part where Curly gets his head crushed in a vice. I'm willing to bet the whole movie's there if you wanted to watch it. <sighs> Alright, that's enough for one night. Time for some rest. I hope my next client will be a little easier. Samuel, good evening. I am glad to see you looking so fresh and well slept. Uh-oh, something tells me I'm in for it tonight. <laughs> the truth is seldom unseen by you, my friend. Tonight, you face perhaps one of the most difficult challenges a therapist can face. The fact that you may not be able to help everyone. In truth, I have failed to help clients with this particular disposition many times. Hey, I'm new at this. You're nigh on 3,000 years old. If you can't help them, how can I? It is not guaranteed that we can help every client. To think we are powerless to help any is a cognitive distortion itself. I believe you know it. Uh, I mean... It's probably the labeling? Come now, Samuel, you are more capable. What distortion is it to believe that we cannot help anyone? Control fallacy? Yeah, all right, control fallacy, I know. I can help some folk. That's right. Here, take a look at this case file. Theater teller, huh? I've known a few of them in my time. They can be a little, uh, self-absorbed. Okay, we have Edmund Keane, age 237. He's British. Uh, Edmund Keane was a highly influential Shakespearean stage actor during the Georgian period. He is credited with more personal interpretations of character as opposed to pantomime performances. More personal into yeah, okay. He lived a tumultuous life on stage, dealing with alcoholism, sex scandals, and entitled behaviour. He wishes to return to the stage, but expresses great anger at critics who might review him poorly. He demands respect as the greatest actor the world has ever seen. He's looking for therapy because people don't like him, it says. He is one of the most revered actors in all of history. So he might have a few cognitive distortions. A few. He may not recognize them, Samuel, but all you can do is present reality to him. He comes. Remember, I will give you whatever advice I can. Good luck, my friend. I hope I'm up to this. What is this vampire I see before me? Mm. Sam Walls. I'm your new therapist. Your dress, your bearing, your hat. You also are forgotten by time. Oh, how fortuitous! A kindred spirit, perhaps. A therapist should know pain, I say. Most excellent. <laughs> Tarnation. Can't get a break with this here hat of mine. No, no, it's perfect. Do not change a single thing. It gives me faith. Faith, my dear vampire, that you can help me. I'm gonna do everything I can. I promise you that, amigo. Do not do so lightly. Darkness dwells within my damned soul. You journey into my pain at your peril, and I cannot be your Virgil. You're who now? Anyway, you wrote in your intake form that you're here because... <laughs> your dressing room is too small. Well, mortals don't appreciate you, you said. Indeed, and I fear they cannot. They must die to appreciate life. As mortals, they cannot ask the immortal questions. What is life for us who do not live? Why are we here? Why do we continue? What do we do when death has no meaning? And what a piece of work is vampire! Mm. How noble in stature! How infinite in life! In form and moving, how express and admirable! In action, how like a demon! In apprehension, how like a bat! Oh, 
the beauty of the night. Mm. Uh, maybe time to cut him off now. All right, that's enough of that. Before we answer the question of why we're all here, why are you here? Well, that is, what exactly drove you to me, partner? Oh, that. Well, a postule of a theater historian I recently seduced and killed sprang the seeds of doubt in mine corpus. He was writing a biography of the great Edmund Keen, and I thought mayhap that I would favor him with a secret or two. He said my acting style would now be considered archaic. Though I drank him to the last, I fear his cruel barb was sharper than my fangs. This embossed carbuncle of corrupted blood caused me, me, to doubt myself. Are all men such fools? Will I ever find my audience again? Or did they die long, long ago? Help me purge these mortal concerns from my mind, dear man. <laughs> We're always gonna have doubts, compadre, that's normal. But I think I can help you see things a little differently. So, <laughs> he said your acting's out of date. Why don't you just tell me why it bothered you so much? Because it's simply not possible. Acting became a noble craft entirely because of me. In truth, I am perfect. <clears throat> okay, so he's... I mean, he's doing the opposite of disqualifying the positive. He's accentuating the positive, so I don't think it's that. Uh, entirely because of me. Is that the control fallacy? Hold on a sec there, partner. Acton became a noble craft because of you? That's a lot of control over a whole skill. Yes, impressive, isn't it? So long as men can breathe or eyes can see, so lives mine art, and this gives life to thee. Well, those are some pretty words. You make that up yourself? It is the bard himself, boar. Well, maybe he had something to do with the development of your craft then. It ain't been just you. Well, naturally. But Shakespeare's works are simply words upon a page without me. Compadre, I think you know he gave you a leg up in your career. You can share in the success a little. Oh, there are celebrated actors in these times, yes. But any success they have is due to my beating the path for them to follow. Control again? This is a special client. Remember that his distortions can be about others. Oh, there are celebrated actors in these times, yes. But any success they oh, have... Oh, I see. Disqualifying the positive. The oh, wait a minute. You're saying that every actor's success comes straight from you? Of course. Even the greatest among my art would have been consigned to obscurity had it not been for my advancements. Every single one of them ain't had nothing of their own to give to the theater? Well, I suppose one or two actors in the last 300 years have impressed me. Well, don't you think they deserve their own success? I suppose mortals are owed their 15 minutes of fame. One must have some pity for them. We are not monsters. But the actors of modern times, they are shallow, beggarly parrots. Parrots who screech the lines, but do they know them? Do they feel as we feel? Labeling? So you're saying modern actors are parrots? Indeed. They are only mimics, and thus no better than a well-trained bird. You don't think they're actually birds, do you? <laughs> My dear boy, they live such short lives. What else can they do but hate the words and actions of their forebears? But when you call them birds, you're just labeling them that. You ain't giving them a fair shot. Oh, come now. I was clearly employing a little dramatic license. But we're here to talk about truth, all right, compadre? It is my gentle direction that takes the craft to higher echelons, and mine alone. Acting does not evolve without me. Oh, that's a bit very black and white thinking, right? Oh. Listen carefully. Edmund is assigning a lot of responsibility to himself, isn't he? It is my gentle direction. So control You're saying only you can change the course of acting? It is demonstrably true. There is acting before Edmund Keane, and there is acting after Edmund Keane. But there's so many types of acting out there. I mean, <laughs> I remember when Vaudeville came out, but I don't think you had anything to do with that. Vaudeville? Oh, mm -hmm. Like so many American arts, an art of the grotesque. You plunge a dagger into the heart of subtlety. So you didn't have nothing to do with vaudeville? Oh, devil's below, no. Well, then you got a little control fallacy, hombre. Mortals got wills of their own. <laughs> Indeed. I suppose I don't want any responsibility for the things the Americans create anyway. 
These critics should honor me, as is my due. Should. You're saying critics should honor you. Well, what happens if they don't? Then they are not doing their jobs properly. I do not ask for their laudations without cause. But if a so-called critic does not recognize my contributions to the theater, what do they know of the theater? Maybe they just got different taste. Uneducated taste, perhaps. If they are just uneducated, why should they appreciate you? Hmm, an interesting point. I suppose I cannot blame them. Thou fiend! You are cruel indeed to beat a man when he is at his most vulnerable. I am here so you may help me cope with a world that has gone mad! Not so you might attack my every word! I'm doing no such thing. All I'm doing is pointing out your reality. If we're gonna cope, we gotta be honest about the world. And I say that you are a villain. I come to you in desperate need, and you respond by mocking my desperation. Why would you do this to me? Do you not know what pain I am experiencing? Do you not know that I, as an act, art Oop. thou a therapist Sorry. or a murderer, that you would push me so to the brink? Do you want me to commit suicide? I'll, I'm sorry. I wasn't trying to hurt you. I, I want to help everyone who comes to me. I... Samuel, a moment, please. Andy, I got a real problem here. I think I'm not cut out for this work. Uh, this fellow's right. Why am I attacking him when I should be helping? First of all, shoot statement. You will do what you will do, and that is all, Samuel. But look at the candles. What do you see? Uh, the candles? Oh, they seem fine to me. Look at the flames. Wait a minute. They're getting higher, ain't they? What the hell's going on? Your client is very powerful. He has his own unique skills earned through the ages. His skill in gaslighting is so intense <laughs> that it affects the world around him. He is altering reality to fit his distortions. Be watchful, Samuel. Do not let him. How do I stop it? Be persistent. And above all, be honest. He does not control your reality. I await your apology, sir. I don't have anything to apologize for. All I did was point out some truths in the things you were saying. Now, if that makes you angry, Phila, I don't know what to tell you. You wound me, but I am strong. I persist. I fight. I know my worth, sir. I have fought and died for my art. I shall take my business elsewhere, and vampire society shall hear of your quackery. Stop him, Samuel. It is not anger, but fear that drives him. Show him he has nothing to fear from you. Now, I wasn't trying to rile you up none. Yet I bared my undead soul to you, and you treated me like a pincushion with your sharp pricks. Mm. Pricks ain't got nothing to do with this, Edmund. And now you seek to proposition me? <laughs> of course, it always goes like this. To you, I am a void. Nay, a whore to use as you please. Well, you are all alike, I say. Go on then, use me. <laughs> you are losing him, Samuel. It is time to remember what makes you special. You are not just a therapist, and you are not just a vampire. He is afraid, but you will conquer his fear. Easy, boy, easy. <laughs> I shall not go easy. I shall not. I... I ain't nobody gonna hurt you. There's a good vampire. <laughs> <laughs> a good vampire? What on the hell? You're safe now. Ain't nobody here to hurt you or make you feel bad. But I... I'm your buddy. That's us. <laughs> We're just buddies, ain't we? Buddies? Uh, yes. A friend. A friend. A friend who wishes to help me. You feeling better there, compadre? Uh, I must confess that I am. Though I scarcely understand how. Hey, well that's just great. I want this to be a comfortable place for you. Yes. Yes, I do believe you. After all, your profession is in many ways similar to acting. It is no wonder that we find common ground. How is therapy like acting? It is the exploration of the soul, is it not? A journey into pain and truth. We see those pains and truths and reflect them onto the cruel world. I ain't sure I quite see it like that, but it's true that reflecting is important. Kind of funny when we can't look in a mirror, huh? One of death's cruel ironies. 
Thus, must we see our reflections in the mortal audience instead? You care a lot about what the mortals think about you. Hmm. Of course I do. Why should I give a fig about what we dusty old folk think, eh? Most of us are stuck in our relative pasts, if you'll pardon the offense. But all them folks die. You're, what, 300 years old? Don't remind me. Yes, they die, but I cannot. I must not. If I do not exist in their hearts, there is only the purgatory of oblivion. So that's black and white thinking, yeah? You cannot. You must not. <laughs> You're talking like there's only one future. For me, there is only one future, save oblivion. Come on now, that's a little extreme. Tis not so. What else have I about the stage? <laughs> well, that's a fine question. I'll tell you what, though, compadre, you are more than the stage. What if theater just didn't exist? Perish the thought. Perish it with all due enmity. Unlike some vampires, I am not some blood-guzzling parasite who will idly sit and wait as the world turns. It's gotta be labeling. <laughs> you calling most of our kind parasites? I am, for that is what we are, if we are nothing else. All right, let's just forget the part where you're insulting other vampires, myself included. If you say that you're a parasite if you don't do something, <laughs> you're gonna be scared as hell of not doing that thing. As an immortal, I aim for loftier goals. Can you hit those goals if you're busy being afraid of turning into a parasite? Ah, but your humble speech does belie the true wisdom beneath. I am indeed cruel to myself. I died for the stage, so I should live for it as well. Should statements. Well, why should you live for the stage? What was my death worth if the stage does not matter? But it's only you who's saying your death ain't worth something. Your shoulds are fatal. Ain't that a lot of pressure? Perhaps. Though one might argue that all great actors must be forged in fire. But is acting really the most important thing in the world? I shall assume that you jest. Vampire society is of no use to me. We are so few, and I cannot have an adoring crowd without a crowd. Is he disqualifying the positive? Vampires ain't got nothing to offer you. Nothing they can give, no. Vampires do not understand the avant-garde. Vampires have a lot to give. We got time to understand things mortals just can't. I think you're disqualifying the positive things about us vampires. Oh, perhaps. But an understanding of the stage is not one of them. You know, I see what you are doing. The motivations of man are well known to me through my art. And what am I doing? You are mocking me, undermining me, causing me to doubt myself. I know thy purpose, wretch. This therapy business is all a ruse. You would lay me low and claim dominion over me. All I'm trying to do is help you, friend. Reality's a lot easier to deal with when you can accept it for what it is. So, now you doubt my sanity. Is there no end to your japes and jabs? I shall not break. Oh, you shall see. The tides of cruel seas will crash upon me, but I do not wither. I know thy game, trickster. You wish to keep me in your debt. You think you are clever, but thy tongue outvenoms all the worms of the Nile. Will, what have you to say for yourself? Speak, that I might hear thy bile. Tame him like a wild horse. Easy there. <laughs> what? I know you're upset and you're scared. I ain't gonna hurt you. But you, you, you want to hurt me? Good vampire, ain't you sweet? <laughs> yeah, it's all right. <laughs> you really don't want to hurt me? You'll keep me safe? We're safe. Ain't no place safer than right here. We're friends. That's right, you're my buddy now. Just my pal Eddie. In truth, I am oft left bereft of friendship. Our kind can be difficult. You mean vampires? Uh, no, actors. <laughs> but to sense one is not alone in all the world is a feeling to be cherished. You ain't alone, I promise you. Whatever bad stuff we're living, someone else has lived it already. <sighs> Tis so. Many geniuses were unappreciated in their time, with wonders of their craft consigned to history's dusty pages. Even the bard himself did struggle. There is some comfort in that. Common nocturnality. We all got the same needs, man. Blood, safety, and sex. Indeed. I too am akin to the doomed Achilles, though my sore spot lies not so low, but twixt stem and stern. <laughs> Take my place to calm it. Oh, seems the spot is no secret to you after all. <laughs> uh, maybe we can talk about that some more in your next session. 
I think you did pretty dang well today. Yes. Yes, I suppose I did. I am rather good at therapy, aren't I? <laughs> if you're here and wanting to get better, yeah, I'd say that makes you pretty good at therapy. Well, one mustn't rest on one's laurels, must one? That's right, Eddie. Okay, I'll see you in a few weeks then. I we shall vanquish my demons together. I cannot tarry. The stage awaits. <laughs> Dang, what the hell was that? One of the darker malignancies of the mind, dear Samuel. You sure I'm up to this? You were masterful, Samuel. You were able to take your knowledge about cognitive distortions and turn their definitions outward. And we must speak about this equine ability of yours in your next session. <laughs> oh, that. Yeah, I learned a lot about myself through my horse. Save it for our next session. Rest, Samuel. You have faced a great danger. Now it is time to drink and be merry with the goths. Oh, well, not sure I'd call them merry, but they know how to cut it loose. All right, Andy, I'll see you later. Good night, Samuel. Rest in peace. I think I might take a look at the journal as well, just kind of see what uh, what he's been writing down over the last couple of sessions. Well, that was one of the weirdest experiences of my life. Let's have a quick look. So yeah, have, oh yeah, the arrow keys, here we go. Client records, that's what we read. So what did he say about Eddie? Edmund is afraid to get back into acting because he's afraid of getting anything but universal praise. Self-centered mindset, believes he determines what acting must be. Diminishes the thoughts and opinions of others. Champion Gaslighter. Tried to convince me I was attacking him. Sees the world through theatre. Next time I'd like to dig in on where all this comes from. Why is this fella so insecure? Uh, there we go. Is that the only uh, client? Oh no, okay. No, we got the others. Um, so we got uh, Dr. Drain, who was the first one we saw. Dr. Drain is addicted to a plasma that makes him black out and do things he dislikes doing. He likes a logical approach. He doesn't sleep. Irritable. Maybe because he's not sleeping. Loves should statements and maybe a fair amount of disqualifying the positive. Obsessed with work. Doesn't seem to like vampires. Next time I should figure out what the heck this plasma stuff actually does. And then we got Isabella Destet. Or Deste. Uh, thinks her life was meaningless because modern art is meaningless too. Apparently this Rise of the Spacewalker movie set her off. So I guess this Rise of Skywalker, huh? Extremely high-minded. Major issues with her former husband. Thinks most people are corrupt, especially menfolk. Used to be a devout Catholic, not so much anymore. Likes to be in control, maybe a lot of control fallacies. Next stuff, I'll dig into the family stuff. Seems like there's a lot of anger there. And we've got Eddie. So what about the journal? Have we got new entries here? Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, okay, there's, uh, we can catch up with this. Phew, what a day. I made it to Andy's club in Leipzig. Folks are real nice here. A couple of goths are real friendly. They've got a darn tootin' bartender and even a friendly greeter. You don't talk much, but I can tell he's an introspective sort. Now, Andy, that's one hell of a vampire. He's just got this presence. You can tell he's 3,000 and that that is freaky as heck, but he makes you feel at home, but naked. I don't know how else to describe it. Oh, and uh, I went to a kink room. Yeah, Sam Walls, kink room. <laughs> My big brother would have gotten a kick out of that one. I ain't gonna write about it here. I should get some sleep in this fancy coffin. Andy, Andy lent me anyway. Uh, I learned some more therapy stuff today. Figure I've been doing a lot of this disqualifying the positive thing. I feel like I've got to be humble after the shit I pulled back when I was a bastard, but maybe that's just the shame talking. Andy says I'm ready to start seeing clients now that I've got my head wrapped around the whole cognitive distortion thing. Can't believe it's all happening so fast. Went for a nice walk exploring Leipzig. There's a music school here and the kids are always performing stuff. I tried asking for Oh Susanna, but the kids today don't appreciate good music. Dang kids with their CD-ROM music. The wax cylinder was fine. <laughs> I met my first client tonight, and who boy, he did not like me much. It sounds as though he doesn't like anybody much, though. So I can't be too disappointed. Poor fella. I ain't never seen anyone so high-strung. Well, maybe Pussifer Jones. Eight years later, and the mem memory of him still makes me laugh. That kitty even hated John Muir, and I think all his animals loved him. <laughs> She would even hiss when he was when eating her food. It was the darndest thing. I picked up that this Dr. Drain is a real should statement kind of fella, but I think I can help him out. If I can get him to be a, take a nap, I think he'll be a lot less grumpy. I had a doozy of a client tonight by the name of Villa Isabella Deste. Holy hell, that is one strong lady. I was shaking in my boots half the time talking to her. I read up on her on Wikipedia and was glad I hadn't done that before our session. I would have been even more scared. I'm surprised we could even have a conversation. She was Pope Leo the Tenth's sister-in-law. How the heck do you deal with family like that? I've had a nice week otherwise. Been exploring the graveyards here in Leipzig. They're real fancy here. Guess it ain't no surprise the place has so many goths. 
Ain't nothing more to read. Okay. I probably want to forget that. I should go talk to Crimson. If it isn't Sammy the Kid, plop that butt down. Got a shop prepared for you. Well, thanks, Crimson. Mm. What is that? A Bloody Mary? No, a Bloody Steve. <laughs> of course it is. How's the crowd tonight? You know, it's funny. They're a little on the weird side tonight. Must be a full moon out. Oh, you ain't kidding. I just had my first therapy session with the strangest fella I ever met. The actor type. Used to be an international celebrity back when I was alive. Well, seems like fame's a nasty drug. Like Andy says, people are people. Doesn't matter what era they're from. Feeling good about your session, though? He was pretty confrontational, but he was happy to talk about himself, at least. Andy says the real clients to worry about are the ones who've got nothing to say. I get that. Being a human isn't easy. You gotta be pretty damn privileged to have no problems at all. Well, this fella definitely has plenty of problems. I think he'll be keeping me busy. It's a big world out there, cowboy. Full of vampires with no self-awareness. Well, ain't that the truth? Well, here's to change, then. To change? You, uh, drinking Andy's blood there? Andy's? Nuh-uh, this is a plain old mortal drink. You think anyone would want to drink that man's blood from a bottle when they can get it straight from the source? <laughs> I suppose they wouldn't. I'm not proud to drink blood, Sam. Wouldn't be doing it out here. I didn't mean to cause offense, ma'am. Not your fault. I guess I shouldn't be offended. Who's telling you that you shouldn't be offended, Crimson? I know this blood drinking stuff is complicated. Damn right it is. Look, I have customers to deal with, but let me give you some advice, Buffalo Bill. Mm -hmm. No therapy in here. What happens at Eminard happens with consent. Got it? All right, that's fair, and my sincere apologies. It won't happen again. That's right. Oh, dang it. I've gone and made myself unwelcome. I better get out of Crimson's way. You. Panoptabella. Huh? Do I know you? I know you. I've been watching you, vampire. Yep, that's me, drinking blood to live. Yes, you do. I saw you. I see everything. I think that was panopti means, isn't it? And um, Bella is woman, right? So woman who sees everything. My name is Panoptibella. It means I see all. Oh, there we go. And I am beautiful. I saw you in the kink room with Reinhardt and Maxi. I didn't mean to pierce their arteries as many times as that. And now, <laughs> I see that you are thirsty and would like to drink. Uh, yep, that is so. Come, drink from my neck. I wish to see what it is like. Uh, okay, so we're gonna just hit the blue ones. Uh, trying to see when it's not on the red. It's tricky. Mm. Yes, I see now. That was very pleasant. Thank you. You will go to your coffin now to sleep. Well, uh, if you wanted to cuddle. It is normal for vampires to enter a state of torpor after consuming the blood of another. I wish you an excellent torpor, vampire. Uh, thanks, I guess. I guess I'd better get some shut eye. This night has gone on long enough. Okay. Very strange. I wonder what, how many other characters we might meet uh, around the club. Good evening, Samuel. I hope you are feeling well rested. I have a new client for you. And I think we will delve into that next time. So I'll just say thanks very much for watching this second episode of Vampire Therapist. Hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, I'm enjoying it. It's, uh, it's I think it's an interesting one, and I'm looking forward to delving even more into the uh, the clients that we've already met, as well as seeing how many new ones we've got as well. I, I think, although it's obviously got the, the vampire trappings and stuff, um, it does feel a bit similar to me to another game I played a little while ago on the channel, Eliza, which was also based around sort of psychotherapy and and stuff. And I, I do find that that sort of thing very interesting. So you know, if if you you, um, you know, have any, any insight into that side of things? It'd be very interesting to, you know, say in the comments, you know, how, um, you know, close to the actual teaching of psychology the the stuff taught within this game. Ah, oh, I'd be interested to, to know that. As I said, I don't really know anything about um, the stuff myself. Uh, but hopefully you've enjoyed it. So thumbs up as well if you if you uh, did, because it's always uh, great uh, to get 
any interaction, any engagement with the videos. And if you're watching this and haven't yet subscribed to the channel, again, that would be amazing to do so. So thanks very much, and I hope to see you next time. Bye for now.